Okay, so I figured I would make this video real quick because there aren't a lot of very good videos to show where the crankshaft position sensor is. I'm having some issues with my car right now. Just pulled the sensor out. As you can see, it's uh, not looking too hot. Not too good. All right, so that bad boy is held in one of these torque screws. Pretty easy to get out, not bad. Mine was uh, kind of wedged in there. I had to pull it out with a pair of needle nose. Not really too worried about damaging it as I'm gonna go buy a new one tomorrow. Now, there really are not any good videos to show where this thing is inside your engine bay. So I figured I'll have everything unhooked. Go ahead and show you guys. So the first thing I like to do whenever I'm doing this is just remove all the piping that's going to get in the way. Um, obviously this would be hooked up originally. So first I'd like to uh, undo this one, yank it off. As you can see the throttle body piping is kind of missing there. I've already yanked that one out. I'm going to be honest and say this is kind of a bitch to get out of the car. Uh, once you unhook the throttle body pipe itself, um, and where am I looking? This one. Honestly, don't know what that one's called. Uh, it kind of feeds in like that. Too dumb to know what that one's called, to be honest with you. Um, and then as you're pulling it out, I always pull it out from the bottom. It's going to be a real pain in the ass to actually angle it out of there. But you're going to undo these two torque screws as well. One. What am I looking? One. And number two. That's what's going to keep the pipe solid down there. And then there's a little harness that'll plug into that. Just be sure you unplug that. That way you get that out of the way and you don't tear it while you pull it out. Just move it somewhere out of the way because you're probably going to have an even worse time if you rip that one out. So I've got it sitting right there. Okay. All right. So once those two pipes are out of the way, your job is pretty easy. Uh, I'm not sure how well this video will pick it up. Put the spotlight right there. Let's see. How does that look? Okay. So that. Let me get the focus here. Doesn't want to. Okay. That little hole right there is where that torque screw went in. So that's where it would have sat. See if we can angle it down in here. Okay, hold on. Perfect. Okay. Get this once more. See if I can focus on it again. It's right down in there. This is where this would have sat. So that hole right there lines up with that hole right there and you just pull it out and it's good to go this is the connector that goes to it I pulled that out clean that up right now I'm gonna clean up that hole where the uh, where the sensor actually goes in get that all cleaned up and then tomorrow I'll go grab the new one and put it in it's kind of annoying to get to honestly it's kind of annoying to unhook most of the Torx bolts that are holding this piping in, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. That one's not too bad to get to. It's easiest to get from underneath the car to actually pull it out. Um, and I loosened that Torx bolt from up top. I found that a little bit easier as well. But uh, as far as symptoms, what I was having was first and second gear as I'm driving once the car reached regular temp. I would hit about 4,000 RPM in, two, in uh, first and second gear, and then the car would just buck back and forth right at about 4,000, and it wouldn't let me get over that. This is a six-speed, by the way. But then, if I transition gears, it would shift just fine. Um, and then in third, fourth, fifth, and sixth gear, it would do the exact same symptoms at 3,000 RPM and the only reason I know that 
I was just using the P3 gauge to look at the exact number. And again, as soon as I would get up to 3,000 RPM, it would just boom, 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 jolt back and forth. It, it sucked. Not fun. Still drivable. I didn't really have any symptoms. Gas mileage stayed the same. But to actually stay in that RPM range was super annoying, especially on stop and go traffic. So, I don't know. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this video helped you guys figure out where that little sensor goes. Like I said, I hadn't really seen much, especially in the forums, there's just people saying, oh, it's right here, but nobody actually really showing you. So, hope it helps.